Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book leading, learning from life and my years at Manchester United. If someone asks you to name a few Premier League teams, you'll surely think of Manchester United. And when it comes to Manchester United, it's impossible not to mention Alex Ferguson, the founder and soul of the team and the author of today's book leading. Alex Ferguson was the long-serving coach of Manchester United from 1986 to 2013. Over 26 years, he turned Manchester United from a team that failed to win an English League championship for almost two decades into a champion legion that has won 38 trophies, including 13 Premier League titles and two Union of European Football Association's Champions League titles. He was also responsible for the unprecedented treble winning year of 1999. That same year, he received a knighthood from the British royal family for his outstanding contributions to British football and became Sir Alex Ferguson. As a result, Ferguson is affectionately known by fans as Sir Alex. You might be wondering how could Ferguson a football coach write a book about management. It's all thanks to Michael Moritz, chairman of Sequoia Capital, a U.S. headquartered private investment firm best known for helping to shape and organize companies such as Apple, Google, and YouTube. Moritz had been following Manchester United since 1968 and always wondered how they maintained a high level of performance over several decades. Ferguson had first talked with Moritz about collaborating on a book before his retirement. But for various reasons, they couldn't turn the idea into reality. With Ferguson's retirement, they brought the project back to the table, and after several rounds of discussion, aided by Moritz, they finally completed leading. In this book, Ferguson focuses on his experience in managing Manchester United, and explains how he built, managed, and led the club to become a champion team. There is neither profound theoretical knowledge, nor a preaching tone to the book. The author in a first-person narrative summarizes his successful experience from a long professional career. Next, let's read the book in three parts. The first part discusses how to improve your leadership skills, the second part examines two traits of leaders, and the third part explores resilience in leaders. In Michael Moritz's epilogue to the book, he points out that there are plenty of attributes that separate great leaders from good managers. Good managers are easy to find, but great leaders are the rarest. So, what should we do to improve our leadership skills if we want to be a great leader? First of all, we should learn to think and operate like an owner or a person owning a substantial stake in the business even if we are neither in a financial or legal sense. Moritz believes that a great leader will never focus only on what the business can achieve immediately. Instead, they have a larger purpose in mind and will develop a long-term strategy for the organization. Simply put, they won't neglect the company's long-term growth whilst pursuing short-term performance goals. They are managers with a sense of long-term proprietorship. Ferguson also believes that when running a team we must look as far down the road as possible. This is the philosophy he practiced throughout his 26-year coaching career at Manchester United. He said it was crucial to prioritize a long-term strategy for the club. He always had to think about the team's composition a few seasons ahead and maintain its competitiveness. To achieve this goal, Ferguson set up a large-scale youth system for Manchester United. This talent training system has supplied a steady pipeline of excellent football talent for Manchester United and ensures its consistently high level of performance. David Beckham for example is a great advertisement for the youth team policy. In 1986, Manchester United scout Malcolm Fidgen spotted David Beckham, then only 12 years old. He was then introduced to Manchester United's football academy. At 17, Beckham made his debut for the first team and has been a star ever since. As well as operating and thinking like an owner, we also need to learn to listen and observe. As a leader, it's important to have a sense of who we are managing in order to draw out the best in people. The only way to figure this out is by listening.